I hope you all had the chance to recharge from yesterday. I hope it was a wonderful and thought-provoking day. I hope you all too. Um, today is my pleasure and honor um, to chair this morning's session, which will be um, presented by Professor Moitza Urek, which is an associate professor and dean of the faculty of social work of the University of Ljubljana. Professor Morla, uh, Moitza is uh, co-founder of the Women's Conference Service in Ljubljana and chair of research of the European Network for Training, Evaluation and Research in Clinical Health. She's also our dear, um, as part of our dear advisory uh, board of Project Grace. And uh, it's, uh, the professor has been publishing extensively um, studies. Uh, and it's our absolute privilege to hear uh, the presentation uh, that uh, she has prepared for us today, entitled Pride Pride and Cause and Experience of the Other LGBTQ gener Generation with Social and Health Care. Thank you, Professor. Uh, first, I would like to thank Christina and all wonderful praise team for kindly having invited me to be a keynote speaker. It's a great honor, thank you. Um, to, say, to tell you a little bit more about myself, I have been full-time social work academic since, since uh, 1990s, let's say, and LGBT activist also from the same <laughs> from 90s. Uh, obviously, and, uh, I'm slowly gaining experience with LGBT aging myself. Uh, I have never separated my academic self from my activism. Over the 30 years ago, I was more of an activist, and today I like, I give my activism more to academic teaching and research projects, uh, usually with training and advocacy elements. Um, about 20 years ago, a colleague and I created a course titled Lesbian and Gay Studies for Social Work at the Faculty of Social Work, uh, later renamed into Social Work Beyond Heteronormativity, and is now called the LGBTQ Perspective in Social Work, uh, showing you uh, how we are trying to keep up with the time in this uh, wonderful conceptual confusion, confusion about gender and sexuality. And as uh, Judith Butler said, I think in gender trouble, uh, let's not impose order where there is none. There, the more confusion in gender, the better. Um, today, I will highlight the key issues, well, in my view, key issues, in the field of uh, inclusive social and health care for LGBT old people. Uh, with a particular con context uh, in the with a particular focus on Slovenian context. And I've been drawing on uh, a few projects that we conducted in last years, the most important being the findings of uh, Erasmus Plus project, Best Practices for Care and Wellbeing Education to support the needs of LGBT people as they age. Uh, where uh, our faculty cooperated with five more partners from three uh, other European countries, Ireland, Netherlands, and UK. And in this project, we use uh, um, innovative participatory methods, such as World Cafe, uh, to research good practice and education uh, and develop learned open accessible, open accessible learning material. I will, I will tell a bit more later. So the, the second project that I am uh, drawing on, uh, the findings that I am drawing on um, in my speech uh, are the findings of the small scale research study, the needs of LGBTQ people over 50 during the COVID epidemic. This is small scale research study conducted in Slovenia in 2021 uh, by Ajay Murcek, Anna Sobuchan and myself uh, in faculty. Uh, social work and we uh, actually um, uh, explore the impact of emergencies in the daily lives of 14 LGBT people over 50, including, including the impact of access to health and social care. And uh, 
we actually saw how important this research experiences and life and activities of all the LGBT people in times of emergencies uh, in order to better respond to their needs uh, in both times, in extraordinary emergency times and in uh, ordinary, ordinary normal times. Uh, and there are other sources that I am using in this speech, like the stories of LGBT or people directed within our course, LGBT perspective in social work. Uh, in, uh, in the student project, we are collecting stories of LGBT people and from various research studies and types and needs of older LGBT people in Slovenia. Uh, some of them were published in the thematic issue of uh, social work journal. This is our Slovenian journal. Uh, and the, the, the title of this thematic issue is Strengthening Social Work to Tackle the Challenging of Aging in the LGBT Community. And uh, we were so proud about <laughs> these thematic issues and we actually we felt that it's uh, urgent that we not publish as uh, academia push us only in English, but that it's very valuable to have things in Slovenia if you want to, the people actually read it. Uh, a short note on terminology, or maybe not so short, I'm not sure, uh, on the language and terminology. Uh, I, you see, I, in my speech I mostly use the term old people. Uh, depending on the context, I may also use other terms such as older people or something else. In the research interviews, I use a term that was more familiar to the interviewees. And I'm aware that the terminology around old age usually arouses strong emotions and opposing views. Uh, usually the terms such as old, old man, old woman are taught to make old people feel uncomfortable, even offended. Uh, and they are replaced by a political language that favors words which are seems more neutral such as elderly, older, uh, senior citizens, uh, later stage of life and so on. In my opinion, um, the search for new, more neutral terms reveals, reveals a discomfort with the aging and old people rather than anything really being wrong in the report. As we certainly come up with similar problems with the term young. We are not looking for uh, saying younger people or something like that. But I admit that uh, uh, there are different views, perceptions, concepts and even sentiments about that. So, if I stick with the terminology a little more, uh, I think that was said a couple of times yesterday, but let me say again. Uh, it's important to recognize that the sexual orientation and sexual identity on LGBT plus people of the older generation might not be understood with the same um, terms used today. Uh, they might perceive themselves as homosexual or, or different gender identity or whatever, but maybe terms such as gay, lesbian, man, non-binary and so on may be unfamiliar to them. Not all of them, of course, but uh, uh, some. some. Uh, and uh, here is the example in a conversation with a social work student, uh, a 75 years old woman from a Slovenian town described her sexual orientation by simply saying, I have always thought being close to women rather than men. So, in uh, her life story, ranging from marrying at a young age and living on a farm uh, to coming to terms with her true sexual orientation, after her husband died and her children moved out, she does not mention the word lesbian once. Uh, this was through this student project to make the stories. In the past, this woman had never met other women who felt closer to women than men. So she couldn't relate her experience to anything. Uh, but in recent years, watching documentaries about homosexuality on TV, films, and so on, she, has, she said she recognized herself in the stories of LGBT people who, felt, who have felt somehow different all their lives but couldn't really name it what it is. Discussion on terminological and conceptual issues a little further. Uh, group discourse, like I'm using now also LGBT word people, can be sometimes misleading too. And uh, I found uh, Sue, uh, Sue uh, Westwood, 
uh, uh, in her Brilliant Act article. Um, I mean, she, she wrote about this really uh, good. Uh, and the name, the title of the article is The Myth of Older LGBT People in Research shortcomings and policy practice implication for healthcare inclusion. Well, uh, according to her group, this course implies the existence of some kind of group identity, although the empirical evidence does not support it fully. Uh, apart from this, the fact, the fact that LGBT people rarely define themselves in terms of contemporary LGBT identities, they are also very they are also very heterogeneous group by gender, sexual identity, age, class, lifestyle, life history, being engaged in activism or being isolated in some, I don't know, isolated place and so on. Uh, I think also in um, uh, Andrew King yesterday uh, talked about this reframing uh, um, um, and framing the identities by ourselves and others. Yeah. So the homogenization of the older people often leads to exclusion. So bisexual and transgender people are not hardly um, uh, are not or hardly presented in research of uh, social welfare for older LGBT people, and older lesbians are significantly underrepresented in numbers compared to older gay men. Uh, and furthermore, the single group identity discourse suggests to policymakers and service providers there can be a single group solution to older LGBT needs, but this is not the case, and uh, maybe more tailored solutions are required. Okay, uh, so I think I, I'm done with terminology <laughs> and concepts. So uh, my aim is my aim is to shed light on the situation of uh, LGBT older people in relation to care and social care with some what broader focus in Slovenia. I will describe now some of the aspects of political and social context that frame the lives of LGBT older people uh, in Slovenia, and I think uh, they, because they, those contexts also have the impact on their access to care and social care. Uh, very important to understand. So, uh, yeah, uh, Slovenia has been part of former Yugoslavia. If you still remember, it's a wonderful country, social country, uh, and it uh, became independent as a state in 1991. Uh, it has a population of approximately 2 million, to, just to have a, 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 uh, around a third of the population lives in towns and cities that are more than 10,000 inhabitants. But this means that two thirds are living in small towns and villages, uh, which are as a rule more traditional, religious, less open to non traditional ways of life, less uh, access uh, to LGBT resources, and so on. And uh, about, you need to know that there are about 70% of Slovenes are Catholic and 7% uh, Orthodox, Muslims, and others are uh, uh, activists. So, uh, uh, same-sex uh, sexual activity has been legal in Slovenia, or uh, let's say then in uh, former Yugoslavia, since 1977. Uh, the LGBT movement has been active since 1984 and we celebrate 40 years this year, while in 2014 the first uh, NGO organization uh, devoted to the specifically to human rights of transgender, transgender person, uh, persons was founded in the country. So last 10 years we are like more talking about trans people as well. Um, so uh, the register of partnership for the same-sex couples has been legal since 2006 with limited inher inheritance, uh, social security, next of kin rights. But to make this 30 years uh, long uh, and painful history of uh, fight for marriage and quality short, after two family code uh, referendums, 2012-2015, in, in which the voters rejected the same-sex marriage equality by a large margin. Uh, in 2022, Slovenia finally became uh, 
the first post-socialist country to legalize same-sex marriage and adoption. Uh, there were some others developing in between, but this is the, the last example. And uh, the legal recognition of gender based on self-identification uh, without medical diagnosis is still not possible in Slovenia. So, as you see, Slovenia has a long uh, tradition of LGBT right movements and the 90s and uh, 80s and 90s actually was seen as one of the most progressive uh, and open republics within this former Yugoslavia uh, and also in the area of the Eastern Europe. Uh, socialist countries. But over the last decades, however, this advantage has been gradually faded away in many ways by right-wing policies, uh, conservative movements uh, like for, for children and families and so on, uh, most of which have emerged from this referendum campaign in 2012 and uh, there are also numerous reports of instances of physical violence against LGBT people throughout Slovenia. Uh, uh, and there are uh, published reports from in the Europe and uh, fundamental um, uh, agency for fundamental rights. But uh, this last um, uh, report in 2024 uh, of um, agency of fundamental rights show that uh, also many positive trends in Slovenia. So, in comparison to Europe, 27 countries, it's not so bad. We are not less so bad. Uh, so, uh, all these people in Slovenia, as elsewhere, I guess, uh, constitute a generation who lived at the time when homosexuality. Uh, was illegal, labeled as a psychiatric disorder uh, or considered sinful and so on uh, and consen uh, consequently many older people spend their lives hiding their sexual orientation even from close family. Uh, we can assume that isolation and stigma are probably forming the main context still today uh, um, and shaping the social life of the older people uh, LGBT generation in Slovenia. But at the same time, we use the first generation of the LGBT grass movements. Activists are now entering the age of retirement or are already retired and are not used to responding to stigma and hostility with isolation and invisibility. It's quite the opposite. It's strengthening the LGBT community, developing alternative ways of living, even, even in uh, their they uh, sometimes they moved, uh, uh, in the past they moved to the uh, big cities in order to get more access to LGBT resources but now we can see more and more they're moving to the countryside because the, the quality of life is better and so on. Uh, but even in rural areas in the past, alongside the source of loneliness, isolation, violence, using biographical narrative approach, we can also find surprising stories of older LGBT couples coexisting uh, peacefully with the uh, small, sometimes even conservative communities or complex and somehow complicated but not so rare stories of old LGBT people and their families who were once married, had children and now live in same-sex relationship with the former and current family trying to find ways to stay connected and find meaningful ways uh, to overcome the difficult situation and so on. And some communities can be very cruel to them, you can hear about that, but while others are unexpectedly accepted, uh, where you would not uh, um, see I mean, that. Uh, I think these stories, although they might be exceptions and so on, they are uh, very valuable for us. Uh, not just statistics, but uh, also those exceptional stories, uh, they, uh, they bring hope and they bring, um, I mean, the, the, the complex reality that people live, actually, yeah. Uh, to dwell a little longer on the subject of family, a survey by a small NGO in Slovenia on needs of older people. In Slovenia found that the older LGBT people in Slovenia uh, reported on strong and stable relationship with their families, whom they experienced as their main support, source of support. Could be their children, uh, nephews, and so on, 
and did not consider ethnic institution of care. Uh, and this study confirmed that find, the findings of those international studies that find that families nevertheless more often than assume an integral part of the support network of older people. Agnes Kiddings and uh, others, they brought uh, a good uh, report, uh, research report, and had uh, articles about that. Uh, Uh, nevertheless, inclusive formal care is an uh, urgent priority. In Slovenia, institutional care for older people is the most developed and widespread form of the care, and community home care is not yet sufficiently developed so far, and uh, differs from one municipality to another. This means that many people, uh, LGBT older people with complex and other people uh, uh, complex uh, and multiple long-term health needs are forced to move to the older people's home and cha change their personal individual lifestyle with institutional routine and you have to know that older people in uh, homes in Slovenia they have uh, 100 to 300 residents so they are really total institutions in a way uh, in this open sense. Uh, uh, you can assume that many older LGBT people who might not be publicly out tend to choose the ways of living and support which permit them to hide their um, sexual orientation and their private life from care professionals. They might not seek help and assistance until very late or in the case of emergencies. And this is one concern that we have. Uh, at the same time, both social and health practices in Slovenia remain hetero and cis normative, with some exceptions, even more so when it comes to older people. Yet, sexual orientation or gender identity is not mentioned um, in any national program uh, for social care or standards or national standards or curriculum for health and social care education. And not, for example, of secondary schools of nursing in Slovenia offer any learning material, guidelines, or any other information of working with LGBT service users. And it's very similar in the field of higher education. Social work education seems a bit of exception, but let's be honest, there is a room for improvement here as well. Uh, so, uh, Older LGBT people's experience in health and social care are also generally also generally under research top in Slovenia. As a result, uh, um, um, older LGBT people are invisible in health and social care and are largely unrecognized as service users. And the most common answer you get from the homes of old people in Slovenia is, well, yeah, we wouldn't mind, but no, sorry, we don't have any LGBT residents. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, to summarize, the typical responses of services in social and health care practitioners in Slovenia, but I think this also refers to some extent to the LGBT population in general, as they emerge from this diverse data and limited data that we, uh, that I, from the projects that I mentioned, uh, they can be roughly divided into these four groups. Openly inappropriate responses or treatment denial, uh, something that we call transfer closet, and effective responses and good practices. Uh, so, in the viewings from the study, the needs of LGBTQ people over 50 during the COVID epidemic that I mentioned from 2021 had both positive and negative, uh, um, I mean, uh, the viewers uh, report about positive and negative experiences with health and uh, other services. On the negative sides, uh, side, they reported subtle forms of openly inappropriate treatment such as remarks, bullying, uh, uh, feeling that they are being talked about behind their backs, indiscreet treatment and so on. So uh, the social status was found, found to be an important factor. For example, there was one respondent with a respectable profession who decided to file a complaint, but not others. Uh, and these experiences correspond to the experiences from the Netherlands that we encountered in the Being Me project and Being Me people in the audience, like Agnes, Anje, um, 
Alfonso and some other. My student member Marcus uh, again and provided care for his long term partner for many years, during which he developed progressive dementia. And they eventually had to ask for help, and following his admission to a nursing home, Marcus continued his caring role, often tending to hide his love and affection due to harassment of other residents and some of staff, but also playing an active role in educating staff on how to support them both as a couple. And he's still now active in, I think, uh, what is the name of the organization, Rosa Cruz. Uh, they are going around and having training for people in other and so on. Uh, so, these stories uh, illustrate the poor experience of care and uh, if we uh, look at international research, we can add also the example of disapproval of same-sex relationships in calls, uh, barriers to affection and uh, intimacy, uh, threats of force coming out to the family, cases of neglect uh, and physical violence, uh, exclusion of partners, uh, not taking them as a partner and so on. Uh, then denial, it's interesting what uh, can be explicit and implicit. Uh, uh, and this implicit, it's interesting uh, because it's hiding behind this apparent neutrality position that uh, professionals can uh, pose themselves. And the most frequent state statements that we heard from the staff in homes was also, uh, we treat everyone the same or they are all the same for us. Uh, and uh, we talk here about so-called universalist approach, this, which is very common amongst professionals working with minorities in general, and are intended to emphasize that no person will be rejected based on their personal circumstances, which is okay, but this approach mainly actually erases the difference, differences and overlooks the respective specific contexts. Uh, and needs of the worst group of all people. Uh, and sometimes such a stance helps the professionals to hide behind the apparent neutrality uh, and uh, or to conceal the responsibility of ignoring certain problems. Uh, and in, uh, in Slovenia or Yugoslavia, if you want, uh, uh, in this historical perspective, uh, uh, this universalist perspective with the belief that all human beings are equal and should be treated same manner, uh, can be also considered as a best le legacy of social work under the socialism uh, in the former Yugoslavia, but on the other hand, um, uh, it neglects neglect the focus on the structural inequalities and uh, yeah, diverse needs of different clients. And the research showed uh, that the staff often justify the opposition to LGBT training, for example, by referring exactly to this uh, ideology of sameness or ideology of universalism. Like, I mean, if we think everybody are the same, why then learn about specifics, specific context and so on? Then, uh, the third uh, type of response leads to what, uh, uh, um, to what might be called the transparent closet. Uh, originally used in a discussion about coming out in family context uh, and here is used to illustrate the particular stage of invisibility and non-recognition of LGBT old people in the needs in the professional context which means that the fact that one's homosexuality or non-conforming gender is noticed so it's not completely ignored, it's noticed but then later minimalized, not taken seriously, discussed, not discussed further uh, actually push uh, old, uh, uh, LGBT old people back to the closet or force them to, to, uh, to open this issue all over again and so on. Uh, then, uh, <clears throat> among the effective responses in our COVID-19 study was, for example, mentioned example uh, uh, linked to the visible sign that the particular institution, health center, home, and so on, is LGBT friendly. An example from Slovenia is LGBT friendly certificate awarded by the uh, municipality of Ljubljana to all public and private organizations that complete the four hours training. Um, 
and share knowledge among, among the uh, co-workers. So at least the management should go through this uh, training and the organization get this LGBT friendly certificate visibly on the wall. And uh, it, it, uh, um, for example, health centers, schools, and so on, they are actually uh, engaging in this. So uh, there is a uh, um, uh, what an uh, older guy, uh, a gay man, uh, say about it uh, in our interview. He said, I found it interesting how to work on me psychologically. It's those seconds when you are walking down the corridor and you see the poster and it says LGBT friendly health center or something like that. Immediately you have one thing is made in your head. Uh, it's okay, it's safe, I'm cool here. You get the sense of safety straight away. So it's, yeah, it's very, as I said, it's very important. And they also emphasize the importance of uh, having access to services and need uh, for aware and trained providers who are able to accommodate their needs as the old LGBT people. <laughs> Website. You 
in the Czech there's still there in all languages. Uh, yeah. And here are some uh, some pictures of our uh, work of Thank you. 